Yo, everybody. International Master Danny Wrench, and this is a chess.com bullet brawl. It's actually a YouTube bullet brawl, to be exact, because that's where we are right now in the wonderful world of the wide internet, the wide interweb. And wow, I played something weird and funky, and my opponent says, hey, I'll meet your weird and funky with crazy and silly. And uh, now we've got now we've got ourselves some shenanigans, don't we? I'd love to just go get the bishop pair, but I'm going to be a little more patient. Maybe I'll sit on the position for just a sec. All right, now I'll take the bishop pair. Take this guy. Cackle. And uh, play e3 and f4, I guess. It's a strange position. I don't know that I'm any better. International Master Alexander Donchenko. I actually have never played this particular titled player on a bull of brawl. Or even the uh, chess.com server, really, if I think about it. I think it's the first, first ever meeting between us two. Hopefully it's the beginning of a long and healthy relationship. You know, where we both accept each other for who we are and, and express ourselves honestly and, and are willing to compromise for the other's needs. You know, that kind of relationship. I have no idea where that came from. But anyway, maybe me and Alexander will, will have one of those kinds of relationships, whatever that is. Not sure I've ever really been a part of a healthy relationship. Hashtag dysfunctional families. Hashtag family patterns. Hashtag get some. Hashtag follow me on Twitter. Hashtag unnecessary use of hashtagging. You are given a two-minute penalty. Go to the penalty box. The only good thing is I have a little bit of time. Wait, but I forgot I'm playing... Uh, forgot I'm playing 1-1. <laughs> And right now, one of my fellow staff members is saying things to me in chat, but he forgets that staff members have their comments seen by all the players. So he's uh, unaware that my opponent can also see what he's saying. Don't worry, he's not saying anything unethical or cheating. He's uh, just talking trash to me. So if anything, it's a distraction to me. Anyway, yeah, so this is not the greatest position for me. And I believe I was playing probably a little bit too fast, faster than would normally be suggested because of my for forgetfulness, I guess, that we have increment. So slow down a little bit, not, not to uh, lose the exchange by missing knight of two. So now I'm going to take here. And I'm... Wait, what happened? Oh, he took there. Smart. Smart man. Oops. He is a smart man, and I am not right now. I have to get off of the A file. Do I not? Let's kick the knight out and attack it. I'm aware that he will... Oh, forgot about that. And now I am likely just losing, yeah? Doing it, liking it, loving it, losing it. That's what's going on here, is I'm just losing. And I'm going to just resign and, and uh, save face and, and rematch my opponent. Hopefully, assuming that he will be interested, not going to take the money and run. Yeah, he doesn't want the money to run. He wants the whole thing today. And that's fine with me, because I felt pretty good about that position, and I was playing a little too fast. So, got a good feeling about today's game, today's day. And uh, this is a interesting variation of the Nimzo. I don't normally play the d5 line, but today I decided to avoid the sharpest theory after c5. And uh, this transposes into what would be a minority attack structure. Uh, Carlsbad, sort of Queen's Gambit, Orthodox type structure. But um, with a little bit of a twist here, my opponent's playing for f3 and e4. Rather than b4, b5, which would be more of a a typical type of plan there. So I will go ahead and open things up and uh, call his bluff, I guess. I'll go ahead and play h6, preventing bishop g5. I wanted to actually play bishop g4 so I could relocate my, uh, my knight. But, sorry, relocate my bishop to that diagonal. But I uh, didn't really get to do that. Sort of missed... Messed that one up, didn't I? Well, I don't really like my position, not particularly here. I want to try to 
target the d4 pawn. This is the biggest weakness in the position. These 1-1 uh, one, one bullet brawls really do make for a slightly just slower type of feel to the whole, the whole experience. Why did I think I could do that? Why did I think I could play that way? Like an idiot. I'm not sure why I thought I could do that. I don't know. My position is really just horrible now. Just horrible. Getting killed. Not a great showing for me at the moment. And that is a bit of an understatement. I um, have to back up, and I'm just down on time right now. Down on time, and uh, not a big fan of my own position either. So that's not good. But we're not going to resign just yet, I guess. Making moves as best we can, given the losing nature of our position. <laughs> so, oh, that was a very good move for him. A very, very good move. And we're going to rematch again because nobody, nobody takes two. Nobody takes two from me and gets away with it. Nobody puts baby in a corner. That's right. Well, the long and uh, happy relationship we all thought this could be, the start of of a healthy relationship where we compromise for each other and express express our honest feelings is turning out to be a bit of a landslide victory currently for my opponent of two games to nil. And uh, wait a second, he can play this way? This is a little bit strange. Maybe I'm the one who's playing a little bit strange. Of course, bishop takes c4 after 95 is also possible. You have queen a4 check, but... Trying to mix it up a little bit, buttercup, mix it up, buttercup. See what we can uh, come up with here. That's strange, actually. I guess I'll give this check and take here. And there's no tactics here for me. Are you serious right now? Are you serial? Al Gore, are you serial? Serial, serial he is. Of course I'm serial, and don't call me Al Gore. That's what he just said. Something weird this way comes. Something awkward this way uh, blows. I think that's how the saying goes. Something awkward this way comes. Yeah, we'll go here. We'll give a little check of Ruski. We'll put the pony on e5. Why not? Okay, well, I still uh, am struggling to, to manufacture anything, actually. He plays this move. And he thinks he's just fine. Plays this move and he says, I'm just fine. And I say, okay, then. Playing a little bit too slow. I feel like I've sort of, I'm sort of playing without my mojo right now. Normally I should play a little faster, huh? Even by my own standards. Ooh. It is strange. Oh, what am I doing? Uh -huh. I just blundered the rook. I was playing too fast to the check. Okay. Well, not a good, not a good day right now for this guy. I guess I should just resign, considering that I have nothing to show for my position, except a bowl full of jelly. And he's just gaining time back, so no point. Let's rematch this. Down 3-0 for the first time in you know, Lord knows when, but a strong young opponent, international master Alexander Donchenko, is taking it to me right now. It's time to stop messing around and play for the openings that I know best. As entertaining as this 
day is for everybody when I'm getting it handed to me. But okay. Yeah, this is a good a good start to this game. A good start to this game. Hmm, he wants to trade everything. I guess I have no choice. But I will get castled and try to bring my rook to the center. Back it up. Likely bring it to f6. Of course, if he wants to take, we're okay with that. Play e5 for sure. Threatening bishop f5 check. And the awkwardness continues for my opponent. A mistake, of course, for him to trade queens on d1. But I've already had some good positions in this particular match against this particular opponent, and I have been unable to convert. So I'm not too overzealous at this point, not that not overconfident necessarily. Ooh, knight to b4 was really strong, because if he takes, bishop takes his mate. Aha, he stops this from happening. But I can still play a4. If he takes, I can actually take with the pawn. Then if he moves the bishop, I can pop the knight in. All right, I'm taking too much time right now. Taking far too much time. It just feels like I should have something pretty good here, but I just don't see it. Yeah, he wants to block me. I guess I'm going to block his bishop at this point. No oh, bishop check here was probably good. I guess we'll play it now. Free moving on passant, coming back. We want to bring the knight into c4. That's what we really want to do, but we got to make sure we free our back rank first. His knight on a1 is, is not a good piece. That is the biggest issue with his position. So, in fact, it's such an issue, I probably shouldn't have done what I just did. I should have just defended the... Uh, Defended against this threat instead of doing what I did. Oop, but he blundered that. And we will certainly take it. Well, was not the greatest position, or sorry, the greatest technique for me converting that good position with his bad knight, but... At least I have a good chance to win the game now. All right, now I'm making a little bit of a tickle. Playing a little bit of tickle right now. Mainly because... The position is much easier for me to win than it is for him to defend. So by playing a little bit of tickle, I think I have a better chance. Oop, don't blunder it. We definitely don't want to blunder away the game like I just did. <laughs> wow. Uh, not good right now for this guy to have done what I just did. But I guess I can't lose the position. Well, that's really not fun, what just happened there. Wait a second, he can't play like that. Now I win. Turns out it was harder for him to defend this position than he realized. And just like that, we've won to bring this thing almost even, except I'm still down two games. So barring that little technical detail, it's almost even, right? Well, we will, uh, we'll go ahead and repeat this again. We will see which line he wants to play. 
He wants to play the whole the whole thing. He likes it. Likes going for the gusto, as they say. This line is nothing but a bunch of craziness. It's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. The white king, or sorry, the black king nearly gets checkmated and and everybody else has a great time. <laughs> so, yeah, it can be uh can be a little interesting. If he castles, I have two options to take on a seven or to play rook d seven. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna go take the pawn. I'm not even sure why I felt that was the the right decision, the Samuel Adams, so to speak, but I I did indeed like it. He can go after the H pawn. The thing is that I sort of assume his king will end up being weaker than mine. I could be just assuming there. And maybe, indeed, everything is just fine for him. But somehow I doubt it. How am I supposed to check and go after f7? I don't know. Got to be careful, though. So let's play knight d6 first. He probably needs to play rook h3 here and attack the pawn. Oh, no, he doesn't. But can I take? I can also give check and then take. I can take, he takes, and I take. No, I can't. I don't really want to do any of that, I guess. So I'll just back up the bishop. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. This has just been the story of my life right now in Blitz. Making good decisions on the bigger picture. But just, you know, they're not good decisions if you're just blundering. And that's what I've been doing. And uh, it's just, it's just, ugh. Completely, completely better for sure position. Just unnecessary. I should just, I should just take and then take f7, I guess. But okay. We play again. That's why we play, everybody. That's why we play the game. This is why we play the game. It's to challenge ourselves to make better chess moves. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. That's okay. Yeah, I know I'm losing this pawn, but but what? But what exactly do I have to show for it? I'm not sure. For some reason I thought I could do this, but maybe not. Yeah, not ideal. Not the best chess for me right now. I guess that's a bit of an understatement, really. Hoping I can go take this pawn back without any dire consequences. Hoping so. I just need to play better chess. And remember, I have the increment. I don't need to blunder my way through the opening. That's the fact, Jack. And that's the fact, Jack. But now he's giving me this pawn. Okay. We trade. We don't have a choice, so we do trade. We don't have a choice, and so we always trade. I can go here, actually, and bring my knight to c3. But I think this is more solid. It's still a really tough position, despite the fact that I'm now up a pawn, because he's got this, you know, all this pressure here. I'd love to take advantage of the rook, something like knight d2. If he moves, I play knight b3. I guess I'm going to take this pawn first, though. First and foremost. And uh, see if I can't create a little bit of a mess for him with my knights. It's a bit strange, right? You have to be very careful not to get one of your, get one of your knights in, in trouble here.
I guess I'll go here. And I'll play b6. Come back. If he takes, I'll take with the knight. Oops. Did not see that coming, actually. It was a bit of a blunder, to be honest. He wants to win. Got to respect that. He wants to win. No, don't take with the king. That would be a blunder of your rook. <laughs> okay, he's going to take with check, I guess. But but it's actually okay for me. At least I thought so. Okay, I can block and we have ourselves a draw. At least I thought we did. Yeah, we do. He can't hold the knight from getting in. He wants a draw now. Do I want the draw? Or do I want to try to pre-move, swindle him? What do I want? I don't know. I don't know if I can even come up with a swindle that would work here. You know what I mean? It's nice to think that you might, but really I have to be careful. Ah, now he's just gonna, now he's just gonna give up the bishop and get his draw. Okay. All right, well, I'm not done right now. This is an epic bullet brawl, and we have got to try to complete a comeback. It's our only choice. The only choice left is to come back and win. Here we have an English attack with knight b3, and, and this is the regular bee's knees, as they say. The regular bee's knees English attack stuff, and he wants h5. This is, uh, as some people are aware, the same variation that I beat Hikaru Nakamura in, in Nakamura's Knockouts, a show that we had. Hikaru being the legendary blitz player that he is. But this is a this is a weird line and this whole knight d5 idea is kind of the the theme of the day. You you're just um sacrificing. Oh wait, in this line I end up going down a piece. No, I don't. No, I don't. Okay. Forgot for a second. You you're sacrificing the center pawn to open things up and and uh Reach a position basically a lot like what you see here. If everything opens up, you hope to punish what Black did with this whole h5 plan. And in this case, that's what sort of happened. I guess I can actually play here. He's not mating me. So I can stop him. That was a blunder by him. He is not mating me. And he realizes the same. And so the match continues. The rematch is on. Now I will play what I normally play against this stuff with knight c6 and knight f6. And uh, bishop c5, castle, the typical way to play this stuff. You try to bring in the queen, sort of bluffing your way at an attack on the king side. You're not really thinking you'll get too much. But you might, depending on how your opponent approaches what you're doing in the center. And now he wants to win the c7 pawn. But it also comes at a small price of the d5 pawn. Hmm. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Makes you wonder. I guess I kind of have to go for it right now. I don't really want to let him double my pawn, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Ah, wait, but he says that's okay. He says that's okay. I'm not sure that was the best idea for him. Isn't g5 pretty good here? Looks pretty good. Smells pretty good. Probably is pretty good, right? You know what they say. Looks like a duck. 
sort of a strange game here for my opponent, actually. I'm going to bring this bishop to f3, of course, where it feels very much at home. Now we're going to go try to threaten checkmate. I'm not sure I'm getting checkmate, but I am sure it's not fun for him. So, if he plays knight to e1, knight g4, what's going on here? He's he's really just taking that pawn? Is he a crazy person? Apparently he is. And he's got no issues with it. No issues with his own approach. Interesting. And I'm sort of in a little bit of trouble here. Hmm, if I take and then take, I guess this is the best chance for me to shake and bake. Is to go for something like this. Oh, no, don't take there. Because you can mate him instead. This is my idea. Now I want to... If he had moved, I wanted to play d5 myself to get my bishop back into it, but he... Whoa, what's going on here? I should have just played d5 right away. All of a sudden, I have a lot to worry about. <laughs> can I take? I think I can take. And then I have this check, and I actually somehow pull off the win here. Somehow, some way, we pull off the victory. Yeah, maybe I should have just played d5. Oh, no, if I played d5, he had f7. So I guess what I did might have been the best indeed in the end. He goes back to his Karo Khan. I'm okay with this line. I really am. I really am. So if he wants to rinse and repeat that idea, I was pretty much okay with that endgame. Not going to lie. It felt okay to me. And he says he can do it. He says he can and he will do it. But this endgame was uh, was good for me until the blunder. Until the blunder of my rook. So, so let's do the dance, as they say. Let's do the dance. This time I'll play another improvement. Instead of taking b7, I'll play knight here right away. And now he has some problemos, some real problemos, a misevaluation by my young opponent to go for something like this. Okay, he's playing for a trick here, clearly. Clearly playing for a trick. I have a few things I can do. I can take on b7. I can take on f7 with the knight. And if he takes on b6, I take on h6 check. He moves, and then I... Make another move. That, that position also looks kind of scary for him. I'd like there to be something even more direct as far as a mate threat, but I don't see it. I can play bishop a7 and just leave everything as is, right? It's just hard to believe that this is anything for him but, but a lost position. I guess I am going to go for this. I'll take it. If he takes, I'll take. And give check and take. And my idea is that if he takes f6, I have knight g4. This is what I saw ahead, and he didn't. So do I have knight g4 anyway? I guess I do. Push f7, I think. Oh, no. Oh, no. Once again, blowing it. Once again, I blow the game in a completely winning endgame. And I think it might be enough for us to call it, given that we're moving toward a 30-minute bullet brawl here. It's these increments that do it to you. These increments make you think you haven't played that many games, which is true. But the average one-minute game probably lasts three minutes when you are playing with increment. Wait a second, that just isn't so good for him, is it? Can I play rookie eight? And if he moves, I can't take it. 
Oh, I was losing on time. Oh my gosh. Well, not quite the best day for me. Another another loss here. Another blundered away game. And uh, even f7 is, is pretty good here. I guess if he takes it, I can pin the knight. And then when he moves, I can take, take. So I guess that was fine. But knight d7, I think, is the easiest win and, and just threaten to play f7 and win a piece. So um, tough games for me today. A tough bullet brawl all the way, May. And uh, hope you guys are enjoying the show. And go, go join chess.com and watch some real live chess commentary during games where a little bit more instructive and and uh, twice as entertaining where a 30 minute bullet brawl isn't because we played 10 one minute games it's because it's because we just we came together and did something special so follow me on twitter everybody see ya